Today, we are gonna be talking about three things. The future of video editing, absolutely insane graphics performance in a portable package and Nvidia Studio. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while, I've been talking about how graphics chips are becoming more and more important for video editors, photo editors, animators, and much more. And now even for regular basic programs, they are taking advantage of graphics acceleration. That's why when Nvidia reached out and wanted to sponsor a video showcasing the big improvements that have been recently made both in hardware and in software, which is very important, I couldn't resist. Now I've talked about a few of these things throughout my previous videos, but today I'm gonna to be wrapping all of this up together and finally showing off something that is available, which I've been waiting for a long time and a few capabilities that I am still frustratingly waiting for on my other systems that Nvidia is absolutely killing it with, which can save you both time and money. Let's start out with the laptop that I'm using for this video. It is one of the most powerful laptops out there. And actually it is the most powerful laptop graphics wise, the Razer Blade Studio. Now I wanna point out that this is not a review video. And this video isn't solely focused on this specific laptop, but I do wanna cover the specs and the features, talk about what I love about this particular laptop and what makes it capable of replacing your powerful desktop computer. And not your $1,000 or $2,000 computer, your four or $5,000 custom built PC, which you guys have, might have seen me build on this channel. First off, I really like the design. It's very premium and Razer did a great job with the build quality. We finally have something to go head to head with Apple, but taking what is good and then improving upon what is not. It's an all aluminum chassis coming in at a surprisingly light 4.8 pounds and it's very rigid with aluminum that doesn't feel cheap like on some other laptops. I'm glad that Razer made their logo nice and subtle for this Pro Machine as well. The charging port looks like USB type C, but it's actually much larger and just for charging. And next to that, we have a headphone jack and two USB type A ports, which is great. And they run at 10 gigabit per second speeds, but that's not all. On the other side, we actually have another one. Next to that, we have a display port output. We have an HDMI and also a single Thunderbolt 3 port. Now, one thing that I love about it is that not only do we have an SD card reader, which is handy, but it supports ultra fast UHS type three cards. Now these cards are not even on the market yet, but when they will be, you'll be able to transfer at over 600 megabytes per second, which is faster than a standard SSD. Now on the inside, there's another great feature, which is Wi-Fi 6. So if you're like me and you have a new router, you'll get faster speeds and better range. I got about twice the speed in the toughest part of my house compared to my MacBook. Now, when you're working, you'll be staring at not only an OLED screen, but one that is 4K and full DCI-P3 capable, which is about 25% more colors than sRGB. And that is great for 10-bit editing, which we're gonna talk about in just a bit, along with other tougher editing. It also is a touchscreen if you care for that. It has a 16 by nine ratio with 400 nits of brightness. And it also has Windows Hello, which is super convenient for login. There's much more that I could talk about hardware and design wise, but I don't, don't wanna do that. Let's just jump into the most important stuff for video editing. We have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, which can be upgraded to 64 gigabytes if you guys need that. And a jaw dropping NVIDIA RTX Quadro 5. Now I have talked about this GPU before and a ton of you guys pointed out how this thing is not a normal laptop graphics card, but it's a full desktop replacement. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at it from that perspective. Now what makes this particular laptop special is it's the most powerful laptop graphics wise in the world. So if you need the ultimate power and you want to not be just stuck in one spot with the desktop, it will deliver. Now before I show you what it could do, let me mention that this has a six core Intel 9750H processor, can run up to 4.5 gigahertz. Now, as you guys know, you've seen other laptops out there and I've reviewed a few that have eight core processors. So if you don't need as much graphics performance as this laptop has, but you need more CPU performance. Nvidia actually has a wide variety of laptops that are part of their Nvidia Studio laptop series. Now, if you haven't yet heard of this, basically Nvidia is doing two things. 
First off, they are making it easier for people to find good laptops for creative tasks by working with the manufacturers and certifying laptops to make sure that everything is running smoothly and you get the best performance for video editing, 3D modeling, graphics design, and other creative tasks. Now, this is great for me because I get a ton of messages and emails, people asking what laptop should I get, what specs do I need? So when they're certified, you know it's going to work. Now, the second one is on the software side. All of these NVIDIA Studio laptops use NVIDIA Studio drivers instead of the gaming ones, and these are set up for the best performance and for best stability for creative tasks. Now, they have a lot of good options, so check out the link in the video description if you wanna find a laptop that will fit your budget. Now, back to this beast here, which understandably is on the high end. It has 16 gigabytes of memory and 3,072 CUDA cores. Now, if you don't know what that means, uh, basically, it's more powerful than an RTX 2080, which was the very best laptop graphics card before. Um, and for video editing, this basically has 35% higher raw teraflop performance and also has twice the video memory, which is really good for high resolution editing. Now, in just a second, I'll show you that video editing performance. Uh, but first, I want to mention, um, I know a lot of you guys asked about 3D rendering and those kind of tasks. So I ended up running Blender's GPU benchmark with just their classic scenes. And shockingly, this thing did it in five minutes and 24 seconds, which is just crazy for a laptop. This actually beats out a lot of desktop graphics cards, the majority of them, and those use over 250 watts of power. So if you guys wanna see how this laptop compares to your computer, download this benchmark and test it out for yourself. The highest end MacBook Pro that I have, it finished in 29 minutes to give you guys a comparison. Now, even though this is a laptop designed for hardcore work, um, I did some gaming on it and I won't judge you if after your work is done, you wanna take some time to wind back and play some games. All of NVIDIA's studio laptops, they have good graphics chips, so you can play games on all of them. And this particular one absolutely kills it. Uh, I ran a benchmark, uh, Unigen Heaven, and it, with the extreme preset, it scored 126 FPS. Now, you guys know I have a Mac Pro, and I have the very best graphics card available. That costs $2,400 to upgrade to it, or $2,800 standalone. And this laptop beat it and it's a laptop, so that is really impressive. But keep in mind, you do still have to be plugged in if you wanna get the full performance. If you unplug and you're on the go, it goes into balance mode to save battery life, and then your performance goes down. So you wanna be plugged in, and you also, when you do that, you wanna go into Razer's Synapse software and make sure it is set to full performance before you start doing serious work. So now finally, let's get into video editing. Now, I honestly don't even have to go over standard 4K editing, uh, but I will. This thing takes everything that you throw at it and it doesn't even care. Doesn't matter if it's H.264 or if it's HEVC format or if it's tougher drone footage. Um, I even put five LUTs and other corrections on here and it doesn't care. It plays back a full 4K playback with zero drop frames and keep in mind, this is in Premiere Pro. You guys know what my previous videos. Now, I know this video looks really terrible. I just stacked all those effects to see how far I can push it and to prove a point. And while I was doing that, I checked out Task Manager and it was only using about a third of the RTX 5000's capability. Now, this is where the future of video editing comes in that I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, over the past few years, more and more processing has been handed off to graphics in a lot of different programs, and that is a great thing. I want this to keep happening, um, especially if you have a good graphics card. This really is nice. Exporting my five minute graded 4K project takes just over four minutes using the April 2020 version of Premiere. If you watch my videos one or two years ago, it took over five times longer than this on uh, the same exact project with the high-end laptop. Now imagine if this was a one hour long project. That would be close to five hours compared to less than one hour now, just thanks to having powerful hardware and good software working together. And you don't need you know, this craziest uh, graphics card that's in here. Obviously it's kind of overkill for this stuff. Now that is in Premiere, but if we use DaVinci Resolve and use NVIDIA's incredible NVENC encoding, this five minute project takes just one minute and 47 seconds, all at the same time having half the file size of H.264, meaning it would take just over 20 minutes for this one hour long project, and then you can upload it in half the time. 
Now, NVENC encoding is not new. Streamers have been using it for a while, and NVIDIA has been on the forefront of this ultra-fast encoding with these encoders. But what is new is that our video editing software is starting to utilize it, and also the encoders in the RTX graphics cards, which all of the NVIDIA Studio laptops feature, they improve on that fast speed, and what is really important, they improve on the quality of this encoding. Where this really comes into its own is if you wanna do HDR videos, which has been a struggle for me personally. Now, on the editing side, many computers have been able to handle 8-bit 4K HDR files for a few years now, but where my massive expensive desktop still struggles, which is frustrating, is the final 10-bit HDR export. A typical 20-minute video for me takes two hours and 20 minutes to export because of lack of hardware encoding. And these RTX chips, not just the Quadro 5000, can do the same task in seven minutes and 11 seconds. That is about 20 times faster. Now, as I mentioned, even though this laptop weighs under five pounds, it is a full desktop PC replacement. When you are working with it plugged into power, you can edit Canon C200 RAW files at over 40 frames per second, and that is with multiple LUTs and corrections applied at full K quality, thanks to the graphics acceleration. And finally, I saved the best for last for those of you guys who stuck around, and that is the new graphics decoding capabilities. So last year, I showed off the first steps towards this with the NVIDIA RTX graphics cards making a massive performance boost, but now you can actually make use of this finally in DaVinci Resolve. So let's start out taking a look at this by looking at Red Cine X, which was the first program to support it. Uh, we are playing back this 8K footage, which is 24 FPS, using the CPU, and this requires five seconds of buffering, and then it only gives you two seconds of playback before it stops again to buffer, which results in about five frames per second, and that is with the CPU being maxed out, and then the laptop runs quite loud. Now, as soon as we turn on the graphics acceleration, this raw 8K plays back perfectly smoothly without even maxing out our GPU, while our CPU dropped to 38% and the laptop got a lot quieter. And now, where the part that I'm really excited about is that we can jump into DaVinci Resolve, the latest version, and this software is very well optimized, but now it is using this latest technology, and here I have an 8K timeline, not a 4K, and we actually managed to play back at about 11 frames per second using standard debayering settings, which is absolutely unusable. And that is already using good GPU acceleration. So now time for the magic. Let's go into the settings and enable full RTX acceleration for both decompression and debayering, and bam. Now you can edit 8K raw video at a perfect 24 frames per second with the grade applied and even then, we're only using about 60% of the graphics card and less than 20% of the CPU. Um, so obviously, to me, that's mind blowing and it's really exciting. And I know that not everybody needs to edit 8K files and go. There's not that many people that are doing that, but it's just extremely cool to see this tech in action finally after waiting for so long and also seeing graphics acceleration being pushed further and further, which will allow all of us, no matter what you're doing, to save time and money. Um, it doesn't matter if you wanna do this 8K or just compress 4K footage with just a few corrections. It allows even lower end, much less expensive laptops to do a much better job than before. So let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. And if you guys wanna get more info on this specific Razer Blade Studio, or check out the full lineup of NVIDIA certified studio laptops that fit a wide range of different budgets and use cases, you guys can check out the links in the video description below. This has been Max. Thank you guys for watching and happy editing.